Hi everyone. Um, today I thought we'd have a look at types of natural hazard. So if you just pop that as your title, types of natural hazard. Um, and then what we're going to do, because there's three main types we look at for um, this course, is we're going to break our page into three, but not in the normal way we do. Do it this way and that way. Don't worry if it's not perfect, um, but just give yourself a bit of room. Okay, so the first one um, we're going to look at is hydrological. Hydro means water. So these are uh, sort of water hazards, um, things like flooding, storm surges and avalanches. So we're going to put those in there. Uh, we'll just title this one for us quickly. So that's geological. Geological. Um, now geo means earth. So these are things to do with the earth, like earthquakes and volcanoes and tsunamis. And then over here, we're going to title it atmospheric. Obviously, atmosphere is up there in the um, in the air, so it's things that happen in the atmosphere um, that cause issues uh, for people as well. Now, remember, these things that happen, they're all natural, um, natural events, and they only become a hazard when people um, and the natural hazard combine. So, if they were just happening on their own, there are no people around, they wouldn't be a hazard. It's just because there's people there. So if we look at um, hydrological, we start by just drawing a cloud. Um, so one of the main um, problems uh, that we have, particularly in this country, one of the main sort of natural hazards is um, flooding. And that's because primarily of too much rainfall. Now there are other reasons that flooding occurs. Um, which we'll look into in more detail in another infographic. But the main reason, the number one reason, is generally speaking too much rainfall. And then of course, what happens is people's properties, so the places where they live or work, um, become damaged. Um, very often the water rises to an unacceptable level and actually floods the property. And it's not clean water, it's flood water, which um, very often is mixed with sewage, um, lots of problems, um, lots of toxic, um, very toxic water, um, which unfortunately really damages properties um, and can mean that they take many months, sometimes a year or more, to um, dry out. Okay, so then that's one. The next one, I'm just going to draw the land here going down to the sea. Um, so if you imagine the sea is normally kind of this level, okay, and that's the land, and we know that that's the land because we've got some properties on it, like that, um, maybe a tree. Okay, um, now what sometimes happens, this one's called a storm surge, um, is the sea, this is, um, the normal uh, high tide mark. Um, in a depression, which is a big anti-cyclone, so a big, big storm, um, there's a lot of low pressure, which means that the sea level actually rises. And the new high water is right up here, and that's called a storm surge. Now, a storm surge, it can be many feet even meters, even here in the UK, um, and that unfortunately can really affect property. So it causes, um, in the same way that flooding does, damage to um, property. It's not a tsunami, so don't think of it like a big wave coming in or anything like that. It's just the normal, so the normal high tide. Um, is sort of this level, if you like, on the land. Um, and then what happens in a storm surge is the physically the whole sea is, is, is higher um, and that causes flooding. And then the last one, one you might be familiar with if you've been skiing um, or in the mountains, 
is an avalanche. I'll just underline those. Storm's edge. Um, and what happens with that if I just draw some mountains and just snow capped mountains like that? Um, and we'll just pop some trees on there as well. Very often, um, you know, covered in snow themselves. Um, and then we've got some people too with their skis and maybe going up the trail. Um, what happens with an avalanche is an accumulation of snow. It's a bit like too much rainfall um, over here. What happens is in the mountains, um, if there's too much snow, um, it will, at some point, it will naturally make its way down the mountain due to gravity. And what ski resorts don't want is they don't want that to happen um, when they're not expecting it. So they'll often set off like charges, like dynamite and things, um, to actually allow a big avalanche to make its way down the valley when they have closed the runs so that people don't get um, affected. But that can cause basically damage, um, can cause damage to people, uh, of course, but it can also damage um, all these trees would be ripped up if there were any sort of uh, homes and houses you know they would also be um, destroyed so people um, wildlife and property okay so there you have it those are your three um, hydrological um, types of natural hazard now if we move on to um, atmospheric so over here We've got uh, quite a few for this one, four in fact. I'll start up here, I haven't seen this in a while, but lightning. Um, so lightning comes about when there's a storm and it's energy, it's particles um, clashing and colliding inside the cloud. Um, and that energy is sometimes released as a massive burst of energy um, and it makes its way down to earth and actually connects very often, uh, perhaps there's a tree or a telephone pole, um, and that sends off its own little charge, and sometimes the two of them meet, and if you've got a slow-mo camera, you can try and actually capture that. Um, it's quite amazing. Uh, so that's in the air, and uh, in the atmosphere. Also, um, in the atmosphere, we can sometimes have too much sun, and that's a problem. When it gets to the point, if I just draw the lantern, where trees, for example, are losing their leaves um, and the ground is all sort of cracked and, um, you know, you're unable to grow crops, that's a real issue. It's going to cause problems for wildlife, it's going to cause problems um, for people out as well. So that's called drought. So we've got lightning, we've got drought. If we stay with the kind of hot theme in a way, um, I want to talk about sort of humidity and drought and how that, uh, when you get those two things together, they cause wildfires, also known as bushfires. Um, so wildfires are unplanned fires. And they're definitely, you know, not something that people um, are trying to have. They um, are uncontrollable. So whilst you might see um, firemen and, and women out there trying to deal with the flames, uh, which can be, I'll draw mine on as sort of as halfway as big as the house, but very often they can be bigger than, bigger than the house, you know, much higher. Um, to the tops of the trees really um, you know they're not really controlling them they're actually just trying to slow them down or to sort of protect um, protect other properties so wildfires are really serious now the number one cause of wildfires is lightning the one, number one natural cause there's lots of human causes as well like um, campfires and, and sparks from machinery or um, trains and things like that so um, I know we don't have a lot of them we do have them in the UK um, but they're much smaller and they're not such a big deal 
Um, but don't write them off because wildfires are a very big hazard, um, particularly in America and, um, and in Australia. Okay, and then the last one, now this one, a little bit harder to draw, but basically something like that. Um, imagine we're in space looking down on top of this. Um, it's in the atmosphere and it is called a hurricane. Now, a hurricane, if you look at it from space, it has this eye. Now, in the eye, it's lovely and calm, but around the outside, there are really seriously strong winds and there is really heavy rainfall. Um, and some hurricanes can kill enormous amounts of people um, because they are just so, so deadly. So don't, don't write these off either. They are, um, if you think Hurricane Katrina killed 25,000 people in America in 2005, you know, that's really not too long ago. And it tells you, you know, that these are not to be messed with. This, this is not the sort of strong wind you might think of. This is the kind of strong winds where it will just tear your house apart. Um, you couldn't stand up in it, for example. So um, if you categorise that as your atmospheric, um, I should just say atmospheric, atmos it's in the atmosphere, let's put it in brackets, atmospheric hazard. Um, they can be really, really deadly. The ones that everyone always thinks about, the last ones now on our list, um, is of course our earthquakes and our volcanoes and our tsunamis that are linked to earthquakes. Um, so for this one, you just draw sort of some buildings like this. This one's fallen over um, and the land is all sort of crumpled up. Um, just make it all kind of jagged really. Um, like that and then okay and just pop some windows on so you know they're buildings now if you think to any of the case studies we've covered but particularly if you think perhaps to um, the Nepal earthquake in uh, 2015 where Kathmandu the capital was just very close to the epicenter. This is literally what Kathmandu looked like, just buildings and um, temples, just knocked to the ground, buildings on their side, buildings about to fall over. Um, and I've got a video where I explain why this happens, but it's all to do with the earth and the heat from the core and convection currents and plates moving because of all that heat underneath. Um, but earthquakes are one of the biggest most deadly, let's do another RIP, um, most deadly um, geological hazards. Now, if an earthquake happens underwater, what you get is a tsunami. Now, tsunamis are nothing to do with the weather. Okay, they are entirely um, because of um, tectonic plate movement under the ocean. So particularly destructive plate boundaries, um, where the plates are moving towards each other and one goes under, it can push the plate up and that moves a huge amount of ocean water up. And then that goes out in a ripple effect, um, picking up speed and it can be, it's not quite a wave like this, but it is um, it is a huge volume of water coming in like a wave, but it just keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. Um, so if you just put here, they are caused by an underwater earthquake. Now, if you want to know more about that, um, like I said, I've got another video, which is about why tectonic plates are moving. Um, so you can look into that one um, if you wish. So the last one, last bit, um, another geological hazard is of course um, a volcano. Now there's different shapes of volcanoes and different types. Um, I'm just going to draw a really sort of regular volcano here um, with no um, lava running down the sides. This one is going to have a big ash cloud and it's going to go all the way over there. 
and we're gonna go kaboom there we go um so this is our big ash cloud a bit like the one that erupted in iceland in 2010 called eafiakiyoko um which basically had it had an, a frozen lake in the crater and as the lava came through it reacted with the lake and it sent huge huge like billions and billions and billions of tons of, of ash basically into the atmosphere now volcanoes are deadly but only if um you're near one okay so if the ash cloud isn't blowing in your direction you're fine um if the lava's not coming at you you're fine um but obviously these are natural hazards and you know this is where people and hazards overlap but these are the ones um for geography that we particularly look at so i hope that was helpful and giving you something to think about